group of uh, muscle. So in this class, uh, we are going to discuss about the attachments of skeletal actions and how to, uh, what is the starting position for palpation and what are the palpation steps, palpation modes and what is the trigger point and how to stretch the muscles. So these are the topics which we are going to discuss now. So first is attachment. So attachment of skeletal muscle is, uh, you know, it's a accessory muscle of respiration. You know, the primary muscle is diaphragm and intercostal muscles and the accessory muscles are uh, skeletal muscles and there are three groups of skeletal muscles are there, uh, anterior skeletal, middle skeletal and posterior skeletal. So when we talk about attachments, the proximal atta there are two attachments, proximal attachment and distal attachment. The proximal attachment is C3 to C6 transverse process of the cervical vertebra. So what is, where is it exactly cervical vertebra? So imagine this is, the image is not clear. So this is the C1 vertebra, and this is, this is C2 vertebra. C2 vertebra, there is a transverse process, clear? So there are, this is C3 vertebra and C4 vertebra, so on, so, so on. So, C2 to C3, C4, when you see the attachment, C3 to C6, is transverse process is the origin. So, C4 and C5 and C6. So, from C2 to C6, there is a transverse process, clear? There is a transverse process. So here the muscle it gets origin from C2 to C6 of transverse process of cervical vertebra. So this is the origin. And insertion, when you talk about the insertion of the muscle, it is uh, attached to the first, first rib. Clear. So first rib is, it is somewhere here. Clear. So from here the muscle originate and it is attached to the first rib. So this is the attachment the anterior skeletal muscle. And second muscle is, and it is middle skeletal. Middle skeletal attachment is from C2 to C7 transverse processes the origin from here and it is attached to the same first rib. Okay. And posterior skeletal attachment is from C5 to C7 is the origin transverse process and insertion is the second rib, not first rib. Yeah, so this is the attachment of all the three muscles. So then, if you want to show me in the model, so this is, first you should know how to identify the transverse process. So this is mastoid process, below the mastoid process. So here is the, this is the point where you can identify C2 transverse process. So C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. So C1, C2, C3, C4, C5 and C6. So this is the trans imagine this is the transverse process of the uh, uh, cervical vertebra. So here the muscle it gets originator and the muscle is, it comes down like this, it comes down like this and it gets inserted to the first rib. So this is the clavicle bone. Collar bone. Below the clavicle there is a muscle rib, so it comes down and it gets attached to the superior surface or superior part of the first rib. So this is skeletus anterior. And skeletus medius, that is the second muscle, it gets origin from C2 to C7. Okay, from C2 to C7 transverse process and this muscle it comes down and again it is inserted into the first rib. And third muscle, that is C5 to C7. So one, this is two, three, four, and this is five. So from five, transverse process, six and seven. So these three transverse process, it gets coordinated and it is attached to the second rib. So this is about the attachment of the skeletal group of muscle. And second part is so action. So action of the skeletal muscle. So the muscle can, you know, the muscle can contract in both the directions. 
that is from origin to insertion, from origin to insertion and insertion to origin. Suppose if the distal bone, this is proximal bones and the cervical vertebras, distal bone is the first rib and second rib. If first rib and second rib is fixed, then if muscle contracts, then it flexes the neck. Are you clear? So if the pro proximal bones are fixed and the muscle is contracting, it will elevate the rib. So the muscle contracts in two directions, origin to insertion and insertion to origin. So when you talk about an open chain function, it flexes the neck, lateral flex and contralaterally rotates. Suppose if we take the right anterior fibers of the scalene, there are three functions. One is flexors, that is frontal, uh, sorry, sagittal plane flexion. If both the muscles are contracting simultaneously, then it will flex the neck. This is first function. Second function is it laterally flex. Laterally flex, same side. Suppose if this muscle is contracting, it will move the neck to the same side. That is, this is called ipsilateral flexion. Ipsilateral means same side flexion. This is second function. And what is third function? Uh, third function is it is it laterally rotates, contralateral rotates. Contralateral rotates means opposite side rotation. So it rotates this direction, left rotation. So the three functions are again I will repeat functions of anterior skeleton. It flexes the neck and it laterally flexes the neck and it rotates the neck to the opposite side. So these are the three functions of the anterior skeleton. If the ribs, if the ribs are fixed, the movement will occur at the cervical joints. If suppose the cervical joint is fixed and if muscle is contracting, then because we already discussed that it is attached to the first rib. So what will happen? The first rib will go up which normally happens during deep inspiration. When you do deep inspiration, these muscle, anterior skeleton, it lift the first rib. So this help that, that is why this muscle is called as an accessory muscle for respiration. That is the muscle which help the deep breathing. And second is, when you talk about the front, the orientation of the muscle, so this is, uh, here it I have mentioned, Frontal plane, when you see the muscle from front, so it will be 15 degrees with the, sorry, uh, uh, 15 degree with the midline, when you see from lateral side. When you see from, uh, uh, it is 40 degree orientation in sagittal plane, that is, when you see, when you see the muscle from the lateral side, suppose imagine this is the muscle, and, uh, and this is midline. So this is midline, and this is scalenus anterior muscle. So now you are seeing the muscle from lateral side. In this view, sagittal side. This is called sagittal plane. The orientation of muscle is 40 degrees. And when you see the muscle from front, when you see the muscle from front, so it, it is oriented 15 degrees. 15 degrees from midline. So, lateral sagittal plane it has a greater moment arm. That is, it the, the function of the anterior skeleton is more in sagittal plane. That is because it is having greater moment moment arm in sagittal plane. So the main function of this muscle is sagittal plane flexion because the moment arm is greater for the sagittal plane. So this is about the function of anterior skeleton. Next, coming to middle skeleton function. So, middle skeleton, again we will discuss open chain and closed chain. Open chain, again it flexes the neck, same. But in this muscle, it lies slightly posterior to the anterior skeleton. So, this is anterior skeleton. And next is posterior skeleton is little slight, slightly it is lateral to the anterior skeleton. We already discussed the attachment is C2 to C7. So C2 to C7 transverse process 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Transverse process is oxidation origin and insertion is same first rib. So what may be the function? Function is, again it is same function. It flexes the neck. It flexes the neck. Laterally flex the neck and at the spinal cord. But this muscle does not do the lateral rotation as previously we discussed. So the function of skeletal medius is flexion of neck, lateral flexion of neck. So this is it is having only two functions. And closed chain function, what is closed chain function? Closed chain function is when the ribs, cervical vertebras are fixed and if that muscle is contracting, it will elevate the rib during deep inspiration. So the muscle action is same as Scalinus anterior. The only difference is it, it does not rotate the cervical spine. So this is about the function. And third is posterior scalene. So posterior scalene already we discussed. Attachment is C5 to C7. Proximal attachment C5 vertebra, C6 vertebra, C7 vertebra, transverse process. And insertion is this is second rib. Previously we discussed first rib, now this insertion is second rib. So if so function of skeletal posterior is open chain function is it has only one function that is it laterally flexes the neck. And the closed chain function is it elevates the second rib. So, in collect, if you uh, if we take a collective function of the scalene groove, the scalenus anterior and scalenus medius and scalenus posterior, it elevates the uh, rib, first rib and second rib. So, this is about the function of uh, scalenus posterior. Now, coming to palpation technique. So, how you will palpate the muscle? The starting position of palpation is the patient should be in supine line. Therapist should be seated here by the patient. Palpation hand is placed in the posterior triangle. So now what is posterior triangle of the neck? Posterior triangle of the neck, it is between the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the trapezius muscle. Yeah, so, so this is, you know the attachment of sternocleidomastoid from mastoid process to it comes down like this and it is attached to the sternum. sternum. This is, it has a two parts, sternal part and clavicular part. Sternocleidomastoid, it has two portions. One is called um, sternal part, one is called sternal part and second is called clavicular part. So, the muscle it consists of two fibers. Sternal fiber is coming like this and clavicular fiber is coming like this. So, the posterior border, this is called the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So, this forms the anterior part of the posterior triangle. So, this is the triangle. This is the triangle. This triangle is formed by two muscles and one bone. What are the two muscles? One is sternocleidomastoid, posterior border of clavicular part of sternocleidomastoid and what is this muscle? This is trapezius muscle. You know the trapezius is the back muscle, superficial muscles. So here is the muscle. This muscle is trapezius. So anterior border of the trapezius. So this is the anterior border of the trapezius. And middle third of the clavicle, clavicle bone, this is the collar bone here. So this bone here. So this bone middle third of the clavicle. So it forms a triangle. One line is, again I will repeat, one line is formed by the posterior border of the sternal part, sorry, clavicular part of the sternocleidomastoid. And posterior border is formed by anterior border of the trapezius. And the base is formed by the middle third of the clavicle. So this is the triangle. This triangle is called as posterior triangle of the neck. Of course there are many triangles. 
So we are we are bothered about the posterior mantle. So this is the place where we can palpate this three muscles, especially uh, this uh, scalenic muscle. So this is about posterior triangle. So you you should you should place your hand on the posterior triangle, just the superior to the clavicle. That is above the clavicle, just above the clavicle, and just lateral to the inferior aspect of lateral border of the clavicular head of sternocleidomastoid. That's what I've explained. Inferior lateral border, clavicular head of sternocleidomastoid. So this is the place you have to palpate the muscle. Okay. Next is how you will palpate. It is. First, you locate the lateral border of the clavicular head. You have to locate. You have to find out the lateral border of the clavicular head. Sorry, clavicular head of sternocleidomastoid. Lateral head of the clavicular head. So, uh, of sternocleidomastoid, it can be palpated. So, your finger pads, your finger pad has to press slightly into the uh, posterior triangle. So. Ask the client to take a short breath. After palpating, you place your hand on the triangle and ask the patient to take a short, deep breath. Inspiration, that is. You take inspiration. You have to take deep inspiration. Deep inspiration. Not that. Ah, yes, we are right. Okay. So now I can feel the muscle contracting here. Yeah. When the patient is doing deep inspiration. So these muscle it contracts and it lifts the clavicle. Sorry, uh, first rib and second rib. So you can palpate the muscle. After placing your hand, you ask the patient to take a deep inspiration and you can feel the uh, sternocleidomastoid, sorry, the uh, uh, scalenic group of muscle. Clear? And uh, ask the patient to take quick breath through the nose and feel the contraction of the scalenic muscle contracting. So this is the location where you can palpate the uh, scalene in the posterior triangle. Here. So now I will uh, explain in brief. So normally in this triangle, so if you take triangle, if you take the posterior triangle, so I am told there are three muscles are there. This is scalenus anterior, this is scalenus anterior. And this is scalenus medius and scalenus posterior. So normally this scalenus, what is this muscle? This is sternocleidomastoid and this is trapezius and this is clavicle. Okay. So normally the anterior scalenite, it is it lies deep to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So you have you cannot you, yes you can palpate, but you cannot palpate um, uh, the most of the muscle group. But the part of the muscle you can feel here, that is just behind this sternocleidomastoid, you can palpate the anterior fibers of the sternocleidomastoid. So in this triangle, you can feel, you can palpate maximum portion of the scalenus medius muscle. So scalenus, then what about posterior? Scalenus posterior. Scalenus posterior is like deep to the trapezius muscle, band muscle. So, scalenus posterior muscle and scalenus anterior muscle only part of the muscle you can palpate in this posterior triangle. Maximum, the muscle which you can palpate more is the middle scalene because that is lying in between the scalenus anterior and the posterior muscle. Okay. And so I will finish my, my topic by with a number one point that is I will go specific how to palpate the proximal part and proximal portion, proximal part of the muscle, how you will palpate, distal part of the muscle, how you will palpate. If you want to palpate the proximal attachment, that is the cervical region, if you want to palpate the cervical region, you first you have to first relax the sternocleidomastoid muscle. How you can relax the muscle, this muscle as the patient to slightly flex. If the patient is slightly flexed, then this sternocleidomastoid muscle is this muscle is relaxed. 
So now when, when this muscle is relaxed, then you can palpate easily by placing your hand behind the sternocleidomastoid. This is the palpation technique of proximal part of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Sorry, scalenic muscle. And how you will palpate? Distant portion that is attached to the ribs. So here you have to flex the neck and slightly lateral flex the neck. So now complete sternocleidomastoid muscle is relaxed. Now if you place your hand just above the clavicle and ask the patient to take deep inspiration. Take deep inspiration. So now you can palpate the distal portion of the scalenic muscle. And if you want to palpate proximal portion, you just slightly flex the neck and place your hand behind the sternocleidomastoid. Then ask the patient to take deep inspiration. So now I can feel the muscle contraction. So this is the way you have to palpate both the proximal and distal. The only difference is proximal portion you have to you have to uh, flex the neck alone and you will palpate. When you are palpating lower portion, you have to flex the neck and lateral flex the neck. Then you have to place your hand fingers behind the clavicle. You can palpate the distal portion of the scalenic muscle. So this is the palpation technique. The last slide is stretching. So how you will stretch the muscle? So again I, in brief I will tell. So what is the so scalenic superior uh, anterior scalenic function is? I will repeat the function of three muscles. Anterior scalenic function is it flexes the neck when it contracts bilateral. Both the muscles are contracting together. We are talking scalenus anterior. It flexes the neck and it lateral flex the neck and it rotates the neck to the opposite side. So this is the function of anterior scalenic. Flexion of neck, same side flexion, I am talking about right side and opposite side rotation. This is the function of scalenus anterior. Scalenus medius function is, it, it just laterally flex the neck, sorry, it flex the neck and again it laterally flex. But that is both the scalenus anterior and medius are having same function. Scalenus posterior muscle is, it has only one function, that is it, it flexes the neck laterally. It does not flex the neck, forward flexion does not happen. So now how you will stretch the muscle? Yes, you can stretch the muscle individually, but as our talk, topic is scalenic group, I will teach how to stretch the muscle in a collectively. All the three muscles, how it can be stretched together. That is, as the patient to extend the neck, extend the neck and opposite side flexion opposite side flexion and same side rotation so this is the stretching stretching of all the three scalenic muscles again I repeat function is sorry stretching is it extends the neck 